Weller man come Bring us coffee, tea and rum One day when the tongue is done Take our leave and go At a fair One of my first experiences with sail power was in a 10-foot recreational kayak. I had cobbled together a rig from various parts. I didn't even know how to sew back then, so I had taken a poly tarp and cut it to shape and simply duct taped the edges. I experimented with lee boards and even adding a jib, and I did have some success and had some fun in that boat but I ended up capsizing it and having to be rescued by a guy in a bass boat. That was definitely a learning experience, but it kind of put me off of the idea of sailing anything with too narrow a beam. I've gained a lot of knowledge and confidence since that time, and so now I'm revisiting the idea of a sailing kayak as it is a very practical means of exploring the water, especially when you expect to encounter shallow waters. Canoes and kayaks are already so easily driven by paddle power, the smallest scrap of sail can make a huge difference in driving a kayak faster and farther using less effort. found a really good deal on a Wilderness Systems Pamlico, and this is a much older kayak model. I can't pin it down exactly, but I believe this boat is from either the late 90s or early 2000s. And I have to say, I do prefer some of the more angular lines on this kayak as opposed to more modern versions. This is the Excel version of the Pamlico, which is a 16 foot tandem. It has two seats that are very comfortable and fully adjustable, a kick-up rudder that is controlled using foot pedals, and it even came with a spray skirt and a flotation bag for the stern. It's really more like a decked canoe with the seats being much lower set. She's definitely seen a lot of use over the years, but it seems to be a solid hull and I got it at a price that I really couldn't pass up. I don't think her previous owner was really much of a paddler. He said that he had used the rig for duck hunting, and uh, I really appreciate the, uh, the price that he gave me. I think he thought maybe I was not quite right for driving two hours to get a kayak. <laughs> at 16 foot, you're almost getting into sea kayak territory there, and this boat is a little bit wider a beam than most kayaks. She's not heavy, but she does have a bit of heft to her. I figure her size makes her just about a perfect candidate for developing a sailing rig. Having a factory rudder already installed is also a huge bonus. I wanted to keep the rig as simple and streamlined as possible. I just wanted a little bit of sail, mainly for sailing downwind, and if I was lucky, maybe getting close to a beam reach with a passenger in the front, which would cause the boat to sit lower in the water and get her keel down a little deeper. My boat projects always involve a lot of trial and error. The first sail was made out of an old jib, and it's just a small lug sail. What's unique about it is that the yard is actually sewn into the sail rather than the sail being attached to the yard, as usual. This sail turned out to be a great performer in heavy air, but I wanted a little more power 
for the light conditions that I tend to encounter in summer. I happened to have a Mill Creek 13 sale laying around that I had acquired for a different project and I thought I would give that a try. It did have plenty of power in the lightest air and anything heavier than the lightest breeze though it was a little too much sail area and just unbalanced and a little bit too heavy for my unreinforced deck. I decided it would be best to make a similar sail that was a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter and make the spars a little bit simpler. I really thought the captured yard from the first sail was a success and I just like the simplicity of that. So I decided to repeat that in the second larger sail I would be sewing. And other than that, it was just kind of a plain lug sail, very similar in shape to the Mill Creek sail. The Mill Creek was 31 square foot and I don't remember the exact area of the new smaller sail I was making but it was maybe somewhere around 25 square foot. I penciled out the shape I wanted on this old jib that I was going to be cutting up that I really have no use for and isn't in particularly good shape but it'll be good enough for a little kayak sail. The sewing process is fairly simple and straightforward. Firstly, I'm just going to fold over all the plain edges just to reinforce the edges. And then I'm going to sew the pocket for the yard at the head of the sail. The final step is to install stainless spur grommets. I'll only be using three, one at the tack, one at the clue, and one at the head of the sail which will be used to attach the halyard, which will grip the internal yard. My primary machine is a Sailrite Ultra Feed with zigzag, and that zigzag feature is very important for sail making. This is the sewing machine that I use in a small business, but I'm not in the business of sail making. I make mostly bags and packs and other outdoor gear and these machines are great for sewing heavier fabrics. I'm currently developing a couple of wax canvas products that I might like to market to my channel viewers. I've got a pretty good tote that I'm refining and also a couple of shoulder bags that I think viewers of this channel may be interested in, but that'll be a little while before those are released. I'm installing the yard into the pocket at the head of the sail and the yard itself is actually a tomato steak that I found at the local farmers co-op and originally I thought it was aluminum because it was so light but it turns out it's actually a very thin walled steel coated in plastic. The pocket ended up having a slight wrinkle sewn into it. Not sure how I managed to do that but I'm no professional sail maker and I don't think that's going to affect functionality so I can live with it. Initially I had the sail rigged with the tack and the downhaul more or less aligned which gives the boom a fairly sharp upward angle. I thought this would promote better balance of the sail and prevent the boom from hanging out too far over the water. But I should have realized from the start that this was going to allow for the possibility of some funky ballooned out sail shapes when sailing downwind. After her first time on the water with the rig, I corrected that angle of the boom and now have it much flatter but still with a slight angle and it's situated so that the 
after end of the boom passes just in front of the passenger's face. It did take some time, but with a little bit of determination and a lot of trial and error, I finally figured out how to cut a perfect recess on the bottom of the mast step, allowing it to mesh with the angle on the forward deck. This provided a much more stable platform for the rig. The mast is a one inch solid wood pole about six foot high. At the mast head is a simple eye bolt to run the halyard through and then I have a cleat for the downhaul and a fair lead for the halyard and the halyard actually runs aft to the cockpit. I fashioned the boom from the same type of tomato steak used to make the yard but this one is a slightly larger gauge as I needed the boom to be very rigid. I could have used wood for all my spars, but I happened across these tomato steaks and they were very light. And so I thought I would give them a try. At some point, I will probably remove the green plastic coating from the boom, leaving me with a plain steel tube. And I'll probably just paint that black and tape or cover the ends somehow. The main sheet is attached to the middle of the boom with a simple clove hitch and then runs through a fair lead just in front of the cockpit and directly back to the helm. It should be noted that I mounted the mast basically as far forward on the bow as I could stand it. And there are a couple of reasons for that. It has to do with wanting the center of effort to be near the keel. The other reason is that the further forward you go on the deck, the more rigid the deck becomes. And so if I were to mount the rig too far back towards the cockpit, the deck is just getting more and more squishy the further back you go. I imagine it would be possible somehow to reinforce the deck, but I haven't come up with an easy solution for that as of yet. I may look into that more in the future. Lee boards are also a possibility, but I'm really not interested in getting into that yet. I like the simplicity of the combination of a downwind sail and the paddle. The two means of propulsion mesh very nicely together if you understand how to use them in conjunction with one another. When you have a good breeze and a good angle on the wind, you can sail and get to where you need to go. And when you need to go upwind or into the wind, simply take the rig down, stow it on the deck, and you can paddle with the mast up. The boat has plenty of power sailing off the wind, and she's also very easy to paddle in a calm or even into the wind. With two people, paddling is very easy, and one person can rest while the other paddles, or you can just have double the power. Her rudder is relatively small, but provides plenty of steering authority. The manual outhaul and downhaul feature works perfectly and is actually a really handy thing to have. The rudder will freely kick up if it strikes an obstacle or the bottom, and you can also manually raise and lower it as needed. The foot pedals work very well when paddling and work well most of the time when sailing, but I have noticed they can tend to bind up just a little bit in higher winds. Sometimes dish soap is used to grease a sail track and I'm thinking that might also alleviate some of the binding of the rudder. It's operated by cables attached to the pedals which slide freely in tracks and you push on the right foot to turn right and you push on the left foot to turn left. It was a little bit weird to get used to when you're accustomed to a tiller. I've made a habit of flying a red pennant from the yard when sailing and from the mast when paddling. This is mainly just to increase visibility so that Powercraft will be able to see me and not run me over because a kayak is already invisible enough 
and this one happens to be exactly the wrong color as far as safety goes. I think it's a very handsome color, but it does tend to blend in with the water. The pennant also helps to gauge wind speed and direction, plus it just looks nice. I find that the boat sails just fine using only the rudder to steer, but sometimes I will also utilize the paddle to help control and steer. If the wind is light, you can paddle with the sail set just to gain a little bit of extra power. It's also possible to paddle into the wind with the sail up for short distances. When sailing tandem with Sydney, I usually will just run a canoe paddle. I believe it's a spruce paddle and it's just lighter and handier and takes up much less space than a kayak paddle. When I'm solo, I usually want to have the kayak paddle because you do get in more strokes in a shorter amount of time and that just allows you more control and more power when paddling. I'm pleased with the boat's performance so far. It's controllable, it's very stable, and it moves through the water efficiently. And it's also just a lot more convenient way to get on the water. I love the fact that a kayak puts you very close to the water and close to nature. If you want to beach the boat and get out and walk around, it only takes a second. This looks like this boat's from the 80s. It's older. It's not very big for a houseboat either. Just choke it and crank it and we'll be on the uh, intercoastal waterway in no time. Down in Florida. Just jump in the water right now. We'll clickbait title this. You won't believe what we found in an abandoned boat. And it'll be a thumbnail image of me going. <gasps> <laughs>